you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Oh, my gosh, everyone. It is CS Show 2021 time. It is the uh, massive week. Today is day one of the CES show. If you're going to it, if you're familiar with it and all that good stuff, uh, we're going to be interviewing a lot of great entrepreneurs, a lot of great companies, a lot of people that are showing there. You can also go to our Facebook group at facebook.com, uh, CES show, uh, and check that out as well. You can subscribe there and see all the different press releases we're re- uh, releasing and everything else. Be sure to watch the show we had with uh, – with the head of uh, CES, uh, Gary Shapiro, uh, talking about the announcements and things we're going to be doing. He appears on the show every year, a good friend of mine. Uh, so watch that. You'll have some of the different uh, things that are going on. But we'll be profiling different companies. They're going to be at CES Show 2021 this year, uh, this week. So we'll be doing that. And today we're starting with one of our first this morning on the 11th, the first day of CES. Uh, this is a company called Caramba Security. And uh, I have with me the executive chairman and co-founder, David Barzilai. Uh, David, how are you? I'm great, Chris. How are you? There you go. It's wonderful to have you on the show. We're going to be talking about what you guys are doing at CES. But uh, give us the uh, uh, brief bio on you, who you are, and what you're up to. Uh, thank you, Chris. So uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Caramba is the third company I have co-founded together with a great team. The um, but at the fr- I sold one of my the companies I've co-founded and CEO. Then Caramba is, seems as the most exciting one of the series of the three. But uh, in between startups, I also have been uh, a uh, go-to-market, uh, whether sales. BD or marketing executive with much larger companies. And with the most recent ones, when I was part of the management team, we grew business from 260 to over $500 million. We tried to do something similar here at Caramba. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how long have you guys been around? We started in 2016. We worked on the product, vetting it, working with early adopters and start selling last year, actually in 2019. Uh, so it's a little more, it's about uh, less than two years, I would say. That's awesome. Now give us the dot coms for people looking you guys up on the website and check you guys out. So it's uh, www.carambasecurity.com. And do you want to give us a brief uh, overview of the company, exactly what it does, maybe products it offers? We'll get into some of the details here in a bit. Sure. So in a nutshell, Caramba offers IoT product security. Our customers are the IoT device manufacturers that need to protect their devices against cyber attacks. Our offerings are uh, cover the life cycle of the device. We enable to secure the development phase, the runtime, as well as ongoing operation, making sure that hackers don't try to, uh, to hack or to uh, uh, find their ways into the device in order to interrupt uh, business continuity or even to affect safety when we talk about mission-critical devices. This is pretty awesome. This is important. IoT is large larger than ever i mean it's crazy i remember when it first launched and everybody talked about the promise of what things are and even here at the show i mean we review a lot of iot products so my whole house is like you know i i can't under the hey so-and-so words or the the a word the uh you know from amazon i can't enter those words right now otherwise every <laughs> device will start going off but yeah my whole home is just i just walk around and tell it what to do and it's just beautiful so you guys uh, have some announcements. You guys are doing some stuff at CES Show 2021. Uh, what's the rundown on some of the things you guys are launching or announcing here? So I have to say that this show is different, right, from last year's. Last year, we were obviously in the corridors and having hundreds of people coming to our booth, uh, presenting, and now everything is how now is online. We didn't know that a month after, right, in February, suddenly things will go a little 
haywire and different from where we used to. Um, we're happy that we still have this opportunity to share our stuff online and uh, host people visiting our virtual booth online and to show uh, to, so they can interact with us and so on. What are we presenting? We are presenting, in, ess- in essence, the, the theme for Caramba's product is seamlessness. We enable the IoT device manufacturer to seamlessly protect the device. Why seamless is so important? Because they, you, as, as a device manufacturer, even as Amazon, as you indicated, there's quite a famous attack on an Alexa where a hacker found ways to, in, to in, uh, infiltrate a house or to the Alexa and start looking and talking to a toddler. Yeah, I remember that. Which was quite awful, obviously, and we don't want things like that to happen. But the, the thing is that when companies, even mighty companies, want to protect their IoT devices, they find two obstacles. The first obstacle is that their R&D teams, right, the developers, are not so much familiar with cybersecurity. So you need to change uh, substantially R&D processes. Not only that, but also in the IoT, you rely heavily on third-party modules, libraries, supply chain providers, and you cannot really impose your best practices on them. So the, f- the first thing is more uh, the ability to overcome that lack of time, lack of knowledge of developers. And the second thing, even if you succeed, then the embedded device, the IoT device, is superbly limited in compute resources. It doesn't have the rich features and the rich resources that we usually have on servers or even on our mobile phones and mobile devices. So for that, if you are a manufacturer and you need to protect your devices, either because of customer requests or regulation or differentiation, you always tackle those two obstacles of lack of knowledge and time and lack of resources on the device. Caramba presents here at CES a suite of three products that enable manufacturers to protect the devices without requiring any changes from the R&D, no changes from supply chain with third party, and no change to the hardware. Geez, Dave, I think we just got a, a keynote speech from you. I think it was awesome. Oh, a, mini, <laughs> a little mini one there. That was awesome. So there's a lot of different industries you guys are focusing on. Uh, automotive, Enterprise Edge, Industry 4.0, and Consumer IoT. Uh, do you want to delve into some of those different aspects? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Caramba started our, call it the first market that we wanted to, to, to realize, that we wanted to test with, the product with, was actually the automotive. And the reason was that we were quite uh, um, aware of the need of uh, automotive manufacturers to protect the devices coming connected vehicles, definitely autonom- autonomous vehicles, but even just connect- connectivity. And with that, we uh, uh, started and our innovation was to look at the car as an array of IoT devices, not as a data center on wheels. Why it's important? Because the IoT device could be protected against unplanned changes, meaning mm. hackers. Yeah. So we started with that. We pretty fast got a lot of traction and brand within that automotive market. We matured the product with proof of concepts, nothing, you know, nothing with production. That was the time of development. And when the product was ready, then we expanded our go-to market to automotive that we were at already, but also to industry 4.0 that has severe consequences of cyber attacks on the production floor. Uh, the enterprise edge are like printers and routers because they've become kind of like the back door or the blind spots through which hackers could infiltrate into the enterprise. And, um, and based on that and, and the consumer IoT. Mm. Now, and w- the thing is that they are, our software are the same. The, the software products that we sell are just the same. The, we are agnostic to the application as well as that we are agnostic to the CPU and to the operating system. And you guys offer several different products and services where you guys will do a design review, help them with that, different binary analysis, 
embedded security and continuous visibility. Give us a rundown on some of those. Okay. So the idea is that, so we've realized that the IoT device manufacturers are kind of like being sorted on different points in their adoption of product security. Some of them are superbly advanced, especially the enterprise edge ones, right? Mm -hmm. But some of them have just started their journey. But uh, and as such, they need help in the more basic components, right? In the, in the preliminary phases of their development phase of their next generation or update of the uh, existing uh, products, the IoT products that they deliver. So what we have is that, okay, if, you're just st- if you just started and you need to open up that black box of software that will run on your device, why black box? Because it's comprised of so many third-party modules that you don't have visibility into. You have the supply chain providers that they give you the binaries and deal with them. I mean, they don't want you to impose your own processes on them and stuff like that. So for that, we have the first product, which is called V-Code. And what V-Code does, I started by saying we're doing things seamlessly. So we enable the manufacturers to drag and drop their binary image, meaning Mm -hmm. the software, the firmware of their device into a container. And from then on, everything else is now done automatically. Oh, wow. The software is being um, unpackaged, so being broken down to its various libraries and components and modules. Each module is scanned, and you receive a report of the security posture, meaning risks and oh, oversights wow. in each of those modules. So you can close the loop either with your own developers or with your uh, uh, supply chain providers and request them to address those matters in order to improve the quality, the security posture of the product that eventually will go to production. Okay, so that's the first product. It's called VCode, and it enables a, a, an elegant way, an automatic way to p- uh, open up the black box of the software image of your device as a manufacturer and enable you visibility into each of the risks that you may encounter within those modules. However, some of those, of those risks may not be addressed. Why? Either because they're part of the open source or they're part of some providers that if from their schedule to fix the problems that you pointed at, it may take them a year. And you don't want to delay your product yeah. for such delays and such encounters. So for that comes the next product that we call XGuard Protect or XGuard. And what XGuard does is to seamlessly being integrated into the software and, in, and make sure it uh, automatically scans, again, the binaries, create policies based on the known good state. Mm. And in runtime, it continuously monitors the device. And if there is a change to the known good state, not delivered by the provider, so it must be a hacker. Someone is trying to hijack the device now in runtime, XGuard Protect shuts the door on the hacker. It oh, wow. prevents the attack by making sure that such changes will not be consummated, will not be delivered by the hacker. And it reports to the manufacturer. So nice. the first product was opening automatically the black box, pointing out at problems so you can close the loop with your providers and with your own developers. The second product, enables runtime integrity to make sure that if there are some uh, attack attempts, they are detected and prevented in runtime. There you go. The third product is a product that we announced just a few weeks ago and less than a month ago, which is called XGuard Monitor. What XGuard Monitor does is that we said the following. In any case, we have an agent. It's embedded seamlessly into the device. And now we enable our customers to monitor fleet of devices in order to identify attack attempts before they took place, Mm -hmm. in order to um, make sure that if there is a behavioral change in one of the devices or parts of the device, they they can be shut down Mm -hmm. or the source of the attack, the IP address where attacks are coming from will be blocked. 
So the third product, Engrand Monitor, enables to manage the entire fleet. Why it's important? Because in the automotive space, now they have regulations where, they, where the manufacturers need to manage their fleet of cars against cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. In smart homes and smart cities, you have those operators that manage the smart city for the municipality. And part of their responsibility is to have visibility into cyber uh, health or to cyber attempts, uh, attack attempts on those such smart buildings and so on. So such product enables managing the fleet in a very cost-effective way because we reduce the number of events by 90%, 9-0. The problem is scale, and we enabled it to scale. That's awesome. These are, these are all aspects that are really important to have because – Consumers' trust in a brand or consumers' trust in a product can be lost overnight, especially if you end up on the news where they're like, so-and-so got hacked, and there it is. And, you know, I we cover the hackathons uh, that are usually in Las Vegas and different things that they do. Uh, I forget the name of the Las Vegas show where all the hackers show up. You know, and they, you see them breaking down IoT devices and different devices, voting machines, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just extraordinary some of the things that can hack, including cars through like the Bluetooth and different measures and all that good stuff. Is that all the products? I think there was there one more. The, the last one that we're talking about is the one that talks about IoT consumer products. Mm -hmm. And this is where we see exactly, you're right, this is the brand risk that we protect against. Uh, the, the issues that manufacture, one of our customers, uh, his slogan internally is to try to stay away from the headlines. <laughs> <laughs> So, and that's, that's what mine would be if I had a company. <laughs> then my CEO would be like, I do not want us on the news. Exactly. By the way, the show that you mentioned, I think, is DEF CON. Yeah. DEF CON. Uh, yeah. so, uh, um, so we are uh, focusing on those, uh, on those markets. Interestingly enough, I started earlier, I said that we started to sell in 2019. And within a year and a half, we already had agreements to protect over 12 million IoT endpoints with multiple marquee Fortune 500 customers. Wow. That's awesome because so we need protection. You know, I mean, I've I've had times where we've had, I mean, we've had all sorts of weird experiences. The Chris Voss show has been hacked its website over over the years. In fact, <clears throat> in fact, the reports I get were daily pinged and pounded on the website from like China or Russia and all these weird places around the world and the reports I get of people trying to get through Cloudflare and, and all that stuff. Um, and it, it's a real big thing. I mean, cybersecurity is even larger now. You know, we just had the huge Russia hack where Russia got into the government and, you know, now it's coming out that they had like admin, they even got admin level controls where they could see everything. And from whether it's like you say, enterprise with uh, large companies, or it's down to like users like me who are like, why is my webcam light on? I've had that actually happen somewhere in the last 10 years where I was like, wait, why is my light on to the webcam? You know, I've gotten notifications from, from, uh, from our uh, our, our uh, local network that it's like some, something is pinging you and trying to get in or something has gotten in. Uh, like we've had, you know, like firewall, uh, uh, these, uh, the, these localized things that monitor the activity. And sometimes little IoT devices decide to go on their own and start dialing out and talking and using up a whole lot of bandwidth. And you're like, what's going on with that thing over there? It's true. Uh, it's absolutely true. And as a matter of fact, so the, the most recent attack, right, with the Russian attack on the, you know, the sources and so on, that's a nation state attack, nation, presumably, presumably, nation states. Uh, so, you know, they have, you can call it uh, infinite resources. And uh, although the cloud-based systems are quite, you know, well protected, they still find ways. Mm -hmm. And they did, by the way, the most recent attack was super sophisticated in many, many, many aspects. Uh, so it. Quite, quite an astonishing event. However, I think it's go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. I, However, I think it's cool how you guys monitor the behavior, so you know if it starts acting differently. You're like, whoa, there's something going on. So, so that's exactly my point. My point is that the uh, most hackers are not nation states, and they try to find their ways in the easiest way possible. Unfortunately, today, the easiest possible is the IoT device. 
The IoT device is not well protected. As I said before, either, just, either because that it takes time to incorporate best practices and measures into the device, and secondly, there are those physical limitations of the device to try to add more features into it to make sure it's protected. So these problems made the IoT devices more vulnerable to hackers, not nation states necessarily, but definitely to hackers, you know, mom and pop and more, and even for organized crime. So um, to give you just an example, there is quite a famous attack on Target. Mm -hmm. So what happened there at Target is that the the hacker's attempt was to try to steal the uh, credit card databases, but they were quite well protected in the cloud. So what the hackers did was actually to deploy malware on the caching machines oh, wow. at, at the payment, right? So they're the point of sale. And those, so you have now small, small call it, you know, spies, small uh, malware on those caching machines, recording every credit card being swiped. Wow. And every once in a while, they all reported it to the hackers, through some kind of a relay, but still. So the idea is that, and out of that, the, they succeeded to get 40 million credit wow. card data. Just because those devices are not, are not well protected. It's a challenge mm. to protect them. Mm. And as such, you, gain, you get more and more attention to those issues. And not only that, you also see regulation. So given the mass scale of IoT devices and the fact that once you attack one architecture, in essence, you can attack between millions to tens of millions of devices using the same architecture. So now you have regulations uh, uh, imposing cybersecurity on the IoT manufacturers on different industries, those that I mentioned before. And that, that's extraordinary. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts, I mean, they just they just look for the weakest point, right? That they can get access to and, and then try and exploit it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and what was interesting about the uh, nation state uh, thing where, where we uh, talked about uh, the Russia uh, hacking us, uh, the U S um, was that they, they got in through a, through a, like an update, like yes. no one saw that one coming. Yes. They they hacked the update or or uh, did whatever they do in the update and <laughs> everyone's like ah, it's you know I do that a million times I'm like uh, Apple uh, oh yeah go ahead and up, 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 update that app and and uh, then you're just like uh, oh my gosh you know and, and people don't uh, understand what's going on so uh, what are some of the key targets uh, for your market if people are listening to this and they're thinking I wonder if this would be good for my company what are some key maybe industries or company or company well industries that you you think would be really good for this and, and should reach out to you guys. So I uh, appreciate that. So let, let's talk, let's talk about this user persona, if you like. Okay. Right? <clears throat> the product security in some organizations is an emerging entity. So you have individuals within the R&D team that were designated the responsibility to protect the device, to protect the next version, software version of that device. Usually we found those individuals, those product security individuals requiring help in identifying problems in the software development lifecycle. And for them, V-Code is a very elegant solution. You don't need any cooperation from R&D. You get immediate visibility to the various components comprising your software. You can uh, uh, show your customers a report with the security posture of the next release and so on and so forth. So that user persona is product security person within the R&D team. So that is one. But the next is, is more interesting or as interesting. And that is now we're talking about corporations that have designated a product security officer, someone on a corporate level that must ensure that the company is safe. They live safe in terms of brand protection, in terms of uh, um, adherence to standards, making sure that if there are attacks, that they're being addressed fast, and uh, also to uh, ensure 
that they can uh, market those security features as differentiators. The, this title is called product security officer and sometimes chief product security officer. We enable them to protect the device, to meet those customer requirements, to meet those standards without requiring any change from R&D. Why it's important? Because R&D usually pushes back. Mm -hmm. You want security, it means I'm going to delay the time to market. And you don't want to delay time to market because it has quite significant commercial consequences. So for them, we provide the XGUD Protect and the XGUD Monitor. So in essence, uh, I didn't want to talk about the industry per se, but rather on the user persona. Mm -hmm. If you are one of those profiles, then we welcome an engagement. We welcome to show, to learn about the needs. And probably we may have a good solution for you to meet your, your accountability, to meet your KPIs within your organization. There you go. Get those goals done so that uh, products can get to market. I mean, it's so important with products uh, that need to get to market quick, fast, and to be able to capture the moment. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, So what's the best way to reach out to you guys to get in contact with you folks? So uh, we have uh, our booth, uh, virtual booth, obviously, at uh, CES. And uh, 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 guests could uh, look up for Caramba Security with a K. Uh, at CES. If they want, then they can also go to uh, to email us uh, at contact at carambasecurity.com uh, and ask uh, to, they can even ask to talk to me and uh, we can continue the discussion from there. Uh, and obviously uh, we can, uh, we have the, but I don't want to be the bottleneck. So in essence, what's going to happen is that we're also going to assign the, the right account manager for them by geography and by vertical. Mm -hmm. And and do, are you guys going to have some videos or some assets? This is kind of weird this year because it's all virtual. So I'm like, yes, uh, it's it's even confusing because I have people write me and they're like, you come by our booth, and I'm like, wait, what? And you know, <laughs> you know, I'm so used to the old way, and my brain has to go, all right, there's a new way. Uh, do you guys have some videos or different things up there? Absolutely. So uh, first of all, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, we were limited by CES to upload only three videos. Oh, so really? We, uh, yes, yes, uh, apparently. So <laughs> you have three videos, one for automotive security and another for the enterprise edge, like printers and routers, and another one for the smart factories and smart homes. So three videos on the website, oh, sorry, on the virtual booth. And uh, you also have their white papers and, uh, and shorter documents, like two pagers, for each of the products in case you want to learn more and to see indeed that there is of interest for you before you contact us directly. There you go. And it looks like I'm looking at your blog here on your website, uh, uh, Caramba Security. Uh, the, uh, you, guys, you guys keep updated on some of the latest stuff that's going on. Like there's an article here that you guys have about how vehicles right to repair will expose Massachusetts residents to cyber attacks. So you guys are keeping your thumb on the pulse of different legislative changes, different things that you're looking out for for your clients. Yeah, that's, I have to say, that's quite a painful matter because we very much understood the need. So uh, to give some background to, uh, to the listeners, um, uh, in Massachusetts, there was uh, a bill that indeed was made a lot of commercial sense. It extended right to repair to anyone, right? To any kind of garage or repair shop uh, to fix, uh, to try to, to fix the, any car, right? That you wish. But in order to do that, it also imposed and required the, the uh, automotive OEMs to provide the firmware of oh. those controllers to anyone that wants to receive it, right? Wow. In order to presumably maintain and offer and, and the right to repair. Um, <laughs> the problem is that, in essence, it makes hackers' life my, much, much simpler. You because just hand the, the first code thing over. You, you want the code. And it's actually the binaries, but it's fine. Give me the binaries. So the idea is that oh, that right to repair that was over, overwhelmingly, uh, you know, approved uh, <laughs> you know, by the public and the voters, um, in essence, is going to make hackers' life a little easier or more than just a little easier, oh. giving them the firmware to try to find vulnerabilities in. And automotive cybersecurity is a serious thing. 
you know, the former um, assistant attorney general for national safety said that connected cars uh, were the administration's biggest problem, given the scale of attacks and so on. So in essence, yeah, we try to keep, uh, to keep our customers up to date uh, and we're quite vocal about our, uh, you know, uh, about observations, which are not necessarily Caramba related. It's much more about the domain of the IoT product security. There you go. And I like how it drops into a, into a box where it, it will, you know, it, you don't have to sit down and work with them and spend a lot of time to, you know, work with them typing out their code. They can have it checked and easily dropped in, which makes sense. Anything we haven't covered about you guys so far? Uh, I think we're quite excited. Uh, the and I have to say one thing which was quite surprising to us. You know, when the we started the the talk here, talking about the COVID nineteen and how it changed CS, but everything obviously it changed the life of all of us. So first of all, we wish everybody health here. You know, um, it's so important, and it gave us the proportions of what's important and what's less important and things that we're taking somewhat straightforward as health are not so straightforward. And we are very much, uh, you know, need to make sure that everybody is healthy and safe. Um, the thing that surprised us was that 2020 was, um, was a great year for us. Um, and we, and also we realized that the product security the call it the IoT manufacturers didn't want to change their plans. And they wanted to continue delivering the products on schedule. Security is a, is a matter of importance to them. And this, I think, explains why the momentum intensified in 2020 versus 2019. But all in all, we, I would like to take this opportunity to wish everybody health and safety to all those that are listening to us and all those that are coming to see us and, you know, all around us. There you go. Thank you. We, we need as much health as we can here in America. You guys are in Israel. So uh, is the COVID-19 going better over there than it is over here? I think everywhere is going better than we're <laughs> I don't want to go into details. Okay, Everybody well, suffers from COVID-19. Well, yeah, the whole world. We're all just in it with humanity. Um, but uh, no, the, the, uh, this is probably even more important, like you say, with COVID, because everyone's at home now. They're all using more IoT devices than ever before. I mean, all of my uh, friends and companies that I know, anyone who's making like things that make your home life better, uh, of Internet of Things. Uh, I know uh, robots, uh, vacuum, robot vacuums have been really hot. Uh, the uh, webcams have been really hot. Uh, just about anything that just makes your life better at home because people are trapped at home and they're using, like I say, more IoT devices than ever before. And the sales of these products are just going off the chart. This is a real huge impact point and, uh, and potential point for hackers to get in and do whatever they're doing, especially because a lot of these people are working from, you know, I just thought of this actually. A lot of these people are working from home, but they're interacting with their corporate um, accounts and their corporate data and stuff like that through their home computers. So there's definitely some security concerns there. I never really that never really occurred to me. But if you you know, I have friends that work for VMware or different other companies, and uh, yeah, I mean they're logging into their accounts from home. And and geez, man, maybe if you get through a light bulb or a lamp or something, who knows what sort of crap you could you could rot. Um, so this is pretty awesome, and I'm I'm excited to see the show this year. It's going to be kind of weird. Like I'm used to walking the show and interviewing people and putting a mic in their face and and filming and you know doing all that crazy stuff. But this year it's like really weird. It's like I'm actually going to watch press day today, sitting here in my chair and just uh, I don't know eating Cheetos and and watching the thing. And this is kind of weird. Like you know what I mean. <laughs> And, and it really freaked me out the first time I got the the PR uh, uh, things from people from CS because they're like, come by our booth. And I'm like, wait, there's booths? Did I did I not understand the virtual nature? So it's kind of funny, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a great year. What I love about this year is um we talked about this Gary Shapiro when he was on, is they're leaving the assets up for 30 days. So people are gonna be able to access the the assets, the videos 
everything. I believe the keynote speeches, all that sort of stuff is going to be up there for 30 days. So if you're hearing this uh, anytime in that time period, you should be able to get to some of these different assets and be able to see what's going on with the show. So be sure to check those out. Uh, anything you want to say in parting, David? Uh, any last bit of information you want to give us? That's all. I very much hope that 2021 will be a much better year for everybody. And, uh, you know, with uh, <laughs> lots of uh, uh, personal prosperity and professional prosperity to all of us, it's going to be a quite, uh, you know, probably relatively to 2020 on a personal level, it's going to be better. Uh, and hopefully the, on all measures, it's going to be better to all of us. Well, we only have up to go from here, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, David, give us your guys' dot-coms, where to contact you and all that good stuff. Yes, please. Thank you very much. So the, uh, the, um, the website, as I said, was, uh, is www.carambasecurity.com. Within it, there's also the Contact Us button. You can also visit us at the booth, at the virtual booth, and uh, look at the videos. You can... Uh, um, uh, leave contacts for us to chat with you live and uh, learn about your needs and how to help you address them successfully. There you guys go. Be sure to check it out, guys. We'll be doing coverage all week of CS. We'll probably be talking about it all month because we can. I love how the assets are up for 30 days because I try to cover everything at CS. Like every year, that's my goal to hit every booth, to at least see every booth. And I, I just always fall. I get like about two thirds of it in the can. Um, so this is going to be kind of exciting because I have more time to play with stuff, you know, instead of just cramming into four days. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, be sure to check it out, guys. CES show 2021. It's going to be virtual there's going to be all sorts of really cool things that are happening we'll be talking about it. you can go to our facebook group uh i believe gary shapiro's in there he comments every now and then on different stuff and different staff of the ces show uh you can go check that out i believe it's facebook.com forward slash ces show or just google it there we'll let you in we'll be uh, showing videos and different announcements like that it's here thanks to david for being with us thanks for spending some time with us sir thank you very much bruce thank you for this great opportunity appreciate that and I'll look forward to 2022. We'll be meeting in person, buddy. In person. In yeah. Person. No, no more of this virtual stuff. Uh, it was good for one year, but we're not doing this anymore. I, 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 w- I want to be able to meet people and, and not get COVID in 2022, which it looks like we'll be able to do. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to give us likes. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Go to YouTube.com for slash Chris Foss. Hit that bell notification. You can see all the great interviews we'll be having this week at there uh and it's free for an unlimited time you can just watch all those videos oh my gosh there's over 700 podcasts on the chris foss show go to uh, the cvpn.com you can see online podcasts over there go to goodreads.com for trust chris foss you can see the authors that we've interviewed on the show we've got some great authors coming up uh fbi director or fbi um i think it was assistant director frank flaguzzi is going to be on uh several great authors of a uh, series of books and different things that we've had on some radio folks i believe tom hartman will be on the show be sure to watch for those coming up in the weeks after we do see a show this week anyway guys we certainly appreciate you guys tuning in uh and we'll see you next time